I need to stop acting so eager when I'm talking to a guy. I think I was act like when I found out the guy lived in New York in my head, I was like, wait, this is so cool. Like what a funny story. You meet a guy at a bar. He's actually in a different state and he actually lives right by you in New York city. Jordan's thinking signs. These are signs. <laughs> Literally. I'm like serendipity. I love this. What a fun story. Will you marry me? <laughs> Literally. And I think people can catch on to that and eagerness is for me at least like reversing it, it's a little bit unattractive it's like i need somebody like i just met you okay give me paint the scenario for the guys listening what's the ideal approach and we are back ladies and gentlemen <laughs> don't laugh at me i'm trying to make energetic pod entrance alex i know i'm here for it every week we're like we're gonna make a better intro and i try it and i don't have your support no you have my support <laughs> i that just it woke me up good morning good morning welcome back to episode seven of mean girl pod i'm jordan i'm alex um and you know what thank you for joining we have an exciting episode today we do we're gonna be talking about how traveling together defines a relationship how to confidently approach the person you've been eyeing all night at the bar mm. how we spend our money and then we're going to go into some questions that I asked on the Instagram this morning at like 7.30 a.m. Because I forgot yesterday. But first, A.B., hit us with the current event. Okay, for the first time in 11 years, um, Americans' morale is at an all-time low. Yeah, I know. I hate to deliver the bad news. Um, uh, that's the first. I couldn't decide between these two. The second current event is that Elon Musk got on Twitter and challenged Putin to a single combat fight. Winner gets Ukraine. <laughs> it's not funny. Really? Yes. Wow. Right? On Twitter. He's I just mean, like, yo. He already gave Uqu Ukraine Wi Fi, which was incredible. So, lit it on up. So, go, Elon. Awesome. Great. Um, thank you for that current event. And, Alex, I'm so happy you're back in <sighs> the New York City HQ. I'm so happy to be back. When we, we landed last night, and I was like, the energy is back. Spring break 2022, baby. It was so fun. It was a lot of fun. Um. <laughs> we went to Aspen. Yes. We, okay, here's the thing. Jordan and I, this is episode seven. We don't know each other that well. No, we, we know each other for, a, it's been 46 days, I think. That's pretty much, like, we were friends before. <laughs> we were in the same friend group, but there was five of us, and Jordan and I were the least close. Yeah. Opposite ends of the spectrum, and now we're traveling together. Your husband liked me more than you did. Exactly. My <laughs> husband's like, Jordan's cool. And I was like, I don't, I don't know her. Like, like I just eh. don't know her. <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't think you were cool. It's just like, I was like, I don't, we didn't talk. Yeah, we we both thought the same thing about each other, which is so funny. We were like, we don't know. We don't get each other. We don't know what their motive is. But now, look Here at us. Are. Traveling. Okay, so when you travel with somebody, whether it's a significant other or it's a friend, you find out everything you need to know. Yeah, like if you wanna figure out if a relationship is going to last, just go on a trip with them. Here's what I, th okay, so when Graham and I first started dating, my aunt told me you have to go on a trip with him, it'll make or break you. Here's the thing. Wait, how long were you dating? When Like six months. Incredible. Yeah, okay. and so we like went to Dallas just for like a weekend because here's the thing, when you have to stay in the hotel room with a significant other, we're talking like, okay, there's the first poop, Oh, there is. That just exists. I didn't even think about like, that. Like, it's so awkward. And you're <laughs> like, uh, everyone does it. But you're like, you can run to the hotel lobby, which a lot of people do. I've done that before. I did it. Because you're like, I'm going to go down. Like, and you're thinking of reasons to go downstairs. Well, <laughs> but you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially some of like some people just aren't fast. No, <laughs> they're not fast. You feel awkward. You, you get pee shy. I get so pee shy whenever I'm peeing with Alex. I'm always like okay, it's happening and she'll like sing a song or you'll yeah. turn the water on. I'm like, yes, that's real. So I think like when you travel with somebody, one thing I noticed about you and I is we're both outfit repeaters. Like we are not afraid. Mine yeah. was all black, so it wasn't as noticeable, but Jordan and I wore the same thing all three days. Not you, a big deal. No, and I made the mistake of wearing, um, what, it's the Ram Super Bowl mm -hmm. sweatshirt. Not even thinking twice. It's just one of my favorite sweatshirts because it's big and comfortable. I wore it almost every single day. Now everyone's like, do you wash your sweatshirts? I'm like, no, I pick one sweatshirt and I wear it all week long. Okay, I don't have laundry in my unit. I think it's fine. I mean, it's your own skin <laughs> shedding. Yeah. Like, Also, quick back to the bathroom thing. I feel like we got lucky because sharing a bathroom versus having your own bathroom is game changing. Like, I don't know if you would enjoy me if we would have shared a bathroom. Why? I just, I'm a little high maintenance when it comes to my bathroom routine. Like I have like a 30 minute skincare routine. Uh, I like to dilly dally when I get ready. I'm not somebody who's like quick in, quick out. Like 
I'm a hot bathroom hog. I think it too. I think if people go, if you're going on a vacation, guys or girls, and you're going on a vacation with somebody else, friends or significant other, it's mentally exhausting to be in the, to have to tiptoe around somebody. Cause like, you're not allowed to be yourself. Like when you're in the room and the door shut, I don't want to know what you do. Yeah. Like, I'm like, do your thing. But when you're traveling with somebody else, you're like, um, I'll do five minutes in the bathroom and I'll fold the towels and I should do. And it's like, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So I feel like we got really lucky there. Also, you and I, we do content as our full-time job. So I'm like, Alex doesn't need to hear me spewing pop culture in the, like the corner of the room while she's trying to like do her other thing. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So also when we were in Aspen, we were going to take, we, you were going to go on a date. Yes. Yeah. So we had a date planned, but the longer I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, I'm in Aspen. I don't want to be stuck with one guy. I kind of want to see what's out there. So we decided to cancel the date in a very nice way, of course, and uh, like start trying to approach guys at the bar because that's something I'm working on. It is easy to have a date. Like we knew it was going to be at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. We knew where the date was going to be. It was a really nice guy. You were going to go sit, plop in your lap, have a conversation. I know dates like scary, but it's harder to go to the local bar and have to talk to guys. Yes. Like I've gone on plenty of dates in my life. I know how to have an hour long conversation. It's the same spiel over and over again. But I real and like I'm good at that. I'm good at dating, but I'm not good at approaching guys at the bar. I'm I'm not confident enough yet. We're working on that. Mm -hmm. I never can make the first move. But so in Aspen, I was like, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to go for it. And you and Graham both gave me incredible tips. So I feel like we should go through some of those. I call it fishing. Like I, I think of you walking around with like your fishing pole and there's like a bunch of guys and you're just like plop. And it's like, do they bite or not? Are they cute enough or not? And there was a lot of cute guys, young, cute guys there. Okay. So it's funny because when we were at the bar, we went to this one bar and we were there really early. So we were like, you know what? Let's leave. See what else is out there. And then we saw this group of guys walk past and I was like, oh, they're so annoying. Like, they're so frat boys. Uh, but like deep down, I was like, fuck, we missed out. They're hot. I wish like we were actually talking to them. Then we went to the other bar. We couldn't get in. So we're like, let's go back. F- first two guys we talked to. <laughs> so these guys were, th- the thing that I think caught your eye was they were really tall. So we were at this place called Eric's Bar in Aspen. And it's underground, fun, kind of like a club bar, pool table, shuffle boards to paint yeah. the picture. I would say tall and confident I could feel their confidence like radiating off of them they were highly confident yeah so we basically you turned basically a group of like 10 go in and we went back to the bar yes we were sitting down and you just went up to the bar to order a drink yes very organically and the guy beside you was like hey take this shot for me I don't want to take the shot because the group of guys was taking the shot yes so that's that's how you got integrated into the guys which from a guy standpoint, that's an incredible way to meet a girl. Like, I don't know if he, that was like a plan or if it just worked very organically for him because it was very smooth, like one of the smoothest interactions I've ever had with a guy. Uh, but I was like, that's genius. Order one too many shots. And then if you see a girl around, you'd be like, oh, I accidentally ordered too many shots or I don't feel like taking this. Do you want to take it for me? Mm-hmm. Like, what girl's going to say no to a free Casamigos tequila shot? Yeah. And Jordan was like, of course I'll take it. They were like, they were really nice. This was at about, this is at like 930. I want to say this. Yeah. We were at the bar at eight and approaching hour is not eight. People don't have enough liquid courage yet. Mm-hmm. It's not even really nine. I mean, it was like 930 on the dot. That it got more crowded and people started talking more. Yeah. Like before that, it's very segmented off. A hundred percent. And I feel like after COVID, 930 is kind of uh, a good time in all aspects of the country. Like Minnesota, maybe, I don't know about Oklahoma, New York. But before it was like 11 o'clock. But I feel like 930 is like no. a good time everywhere. At this point, we're like, we all just want to hang out. Let's just go earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So the guys, so the guys turn to you. We need to call them, like, let's just call them like thing one and thing two. Okay. Um, they were so nice. They were actually very nice. Yeah. Tall. Very tall. So we were like, where? Okay. This is, this was one of my tips I gave you. So I gave Jordan three tips. And oh yeah. Wait, can I say something quick? Yes. Um, when you were doing like the fishing. analogy of fishing, I was going to say that your tips will make it so I catch every fish and reel them in. Like, very true. Your tips are incredible. Oh, thanks. And, and Graham's too. Like Graham helped with these tips yeah. as well. Gra- yeah, Graham's just sitting there kind of like listening to us both. Um, okay, the, the very first tip that I've told you is posture. Like, yep. it's like just, I don't know. My, <laughs> it's so true. It's like my mom always said how you, how you stand is how you feel about yourself. Yes. And you, you said it yourself. These guys were confident and they were. 
They were just, they had, they, a guy too, if he has bad posture, tells you everything. So shoulders mm-hmm. up, back and down. And then you're like, I'm ready to talk. Number two, eye contact. Like there were guys there that were looking at you. And it's like, if you look back, it almost gives them the signal of like, yes, I'm single and you can come talk to me. Mm-hmm. Like if, you know what I mean? If you just like stick them in the eyes and you're like, mm-hmm. Honestly, at that point, it's almost like, uh, hi. You just like say it. Eye contact's huge. I, back in 2019, pre-COVID, I was a little bit more confident. I think the confidence is lacking because of COVID. Let's just be real. Like we went two years without talking to anybody. But in 2019, I used to have this trick with eye contact where if you were seated at a bar that was like a square or a circle where you could see people across from you and you saw a guy you liked, you would make eye contact with them, hold it three seconds longer than you would and smile. So it'd be like you're looking at them, smile, look for like two more seconds and look away and start talking to your friend. I think that's minimizing risk. I think, okay, this is what I think we're doing at the bar. Minimize risk. Yes. If, if you're holding eye contact with somebody and because the biggest, the biggest reason we don't approach somebody is the fear of rejection or the fact that they, that they might have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Yes. So if you're holding eye contact, that's no harm, no foul. Mm-hmm. No, no girl's going to get mad and the guy's doing it back to you. Yes. The second that, that leads me to my third point of have a, if you're going to go approach a guy have a non-controversial, minimal risk approach, which would be my favorite question to start at the bar is, hey, Tom, or what we, I guess you don't know his name. Hey guys, we were making bets over there of where you're from. We all think you're from Indiana. If a girl walks up and it's like, this is my boyfriend, like, oh my God, hi, I'm Jordan. We were just betting where you guys were from. Yeah. Segway. Yeah. And I also, I think that's something great your wing woman can do too, because when we were, whenever we're together, I approach a guy and then all of a sudden you're like, hitting them with the questions that keeps them engaged and keeps them wanting to stay. You have, it's a game at the bar. Yeah. You even said this when, okay. All right. So let's, let's go back to the story, yeah. I guess. The guys give you the shot. Yep. And then they're talking to us. We started off with guessing where they were from. Mm-hmm. One of them happened to live in New York. Yeah. A block over from me. <laughs> Ironic. Um, And the other one lived in Florida. Yeah. And they were, but they, that was like a great conversation then they ask where we're from. Okay. Then we hit them with the, if you could have dinner with somebody dead or alive, who would it be and why? I feel like if you have a list of like non-traditional questions, it just makes the bar conversation so much more fun. Yes. I remember this is a so- like side note back in the day. If you, do you know Matthew Hussey is? He's like a relationship God. Uh-huh. He taught me and millions of other women. <laughs> we had a solo one-on-one session together <laughs> that when you go on a date with a guy, you need to ask them questions that will get them thinking because it, even if the date was bad, they can at least leave being being like that girl actually like had some cool questions. Like you have to make yourself stand out from the rest because there's a lot of us out here and a lot of girls are the same, especially when we're drinking. So what's going to make you stand out? That question. Totally. They, okay. And then the other thing was we had Graham there. Mm-hmm. You can tell everything about a guy, especially these two guys, because they have to walk over, shake his hand. And then it's like you just segued from like them hitting on you to like, Yo, bro, what's up? Like, what do you do? So you get to see him like almost as though you brought them home and were introducing him to your brother. Like you get to see them in that atmosphere, which never happens at a bar. No. And they they were cool. And Graham, happy, he liked one over the other kind of. Yeah. He was like, oh, that guy's genuine. And like, he'll actually talk to me, make eye contact and like wants to know about me. The other guy, the other guy started texting a lot. Mm-hmm. And then we saw the background on his phone. Yep. Which one did it have? There was a girl on it. A cute little photo of not his sister. I hope not. With how they were sitting. <laughs> if it's his sister, we have a whole other slew of issues. Yeah. And then thanks to LinkedIn, and because we, we knew his job, we were able to look him up, got his last name, found his Instagram within five seconds. Totally as a girlfriend. Yeah. Not a big deal. We picked the other guy anyways. So I think that's something to note too, is if you are pursuing a guy at the bar and he's not biting back, It's not going to be a you problem. I mean, nine out of 10 times, it's not going to be. It could be. But it's probably because they have a girlfriend. They're talking to another girl or something else is involved in the situation. Yeah. And there's so many guys out at the bar. It's just like, okay. Yeah. Also, another thing that I took from that situation is I need to stop acting so eager when I'm talking to a guy. I think... I was act like when I found out the guy lived in New York in my head, I was like, wait, this is so cool. Like what a funny story. You meet a guy at a bar. He's actually in a different state and he actually lives right by you in New York city. Jordan's thinking signs. These are signs. (laughs) Literally. I'm like serendipity. I love this. What a fun story. Will you marry me? (laughs) Literally. And I think people can catch on to that and eagerness. 
is for me at least like reversing it it's a little bit unattractive because it's like i need somebody like i just met you okay give me paint the scenario for the guys listening what's the ideal approach i think if a guy so everything that these two guys did like the drinks it's funny it's causes like everyone to relax a little bit and then getting to know one another but still playing it cool like asking questions but not too many questions but being funny like making jokes okay i think this takes the pressure off of guys yeah so if you're like stop flirting and hitting on me and go straight for like quirky funny questions yes. a that'll set you apart from all the other guys at the bar but b like what's the pressure in that just have a conversation exactly and like no need to brag we don't need to like hear why you're an aspen or <laughs> we're good what you're doing the next day just make some jokes drink some drinks and keep the conversation extremely lighthearted. Yeah, and ask, like, what do you do for a living? Or, like, like what are your... We were asking these guys, what are your hobbies? One yeah. of the questions we asked them, which I loved, was what sport, What would be your dream sporting event to go to? Yeah. And that showed us that one of them liked to travel and the other one loves to golf. Like, we had a great conversation with these guys. Yeah, and, like, something to note, too, is when you're meeting a guy at the bar, it's not a first date. No. It is just meeting. So don't feel like you need to be asking all of these serious questions and making it into a big ordeal, just relax. And I'm teaching myself that too, by the Totally. Way. Yeah. Okay, so you said the three, you taught me something called the three sixes. <laughs> yes. Do elaborate. And it does not have anything to do with the devil, okay? I hate that the, those are the three numbers, but that's just how it is. Totally. Um, so me and my best friend from home, I have to give her credit because she helped me think of it, came up with the three six rule where when we're looking for an ideal guy, they have to be above six feet, make at least six figures, <laughs> six inches, be at least six inches. Six inches what? In the downstairs department. What is that? Their, their legs? Their dick. <laughs> their dick needs to be at least six inches. So Jordan has the three six rule, which she's telling me. So she's, you know, had a couple of glasses of wine at the bar. And she's like, I just need a three six. And I'm like, oh, I'm very afraid to ask you what that is. And I'll be lenient on the last one. Okay, everyone. Okay. It just, it's better is if you're six like. six even a lot? I don't know. I'm wondering. I think like, so. My friend I think that's like average. It's like saying he needs to be 5'10". Oh, good. <laughs> then we're not putting pressure on their dick size. Well, you're not even going to be able to know at the bar. <laughs> Maybe big dick energy. Yes. I like that better. Ooh, yeah. six yeah, inch like energy. Better. Six inch energy. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so six figures, um, six feet, and six inch energy. Okay. I like that. I like that too. Everybody should have six inch energy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have another question for you. These two guys were on a guy's trip. Well, there were six guys total. Mm -hmm. um, and they had all met there from all over the country. They went to college together. And every year they take a trip together. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on leaving a group of friends? Okay, so that's another thing too is I, I think the guys weren't super into talking to us because they were with their friends. I feel like guys at the end of the day, it's like bros before hoes all day, every day, especially if they're all spending money to go on a trip together where they don't see each other very often. Like these guys were from all parts of the country it didn't seem like they saw each other that often based off of one of the interactions where this guy literally jumped in the other guy's arms. Mm -hmm. So I think they were like, you know what? Like, we're going to be bros and we're going to hang out with each other. I thought they did a good, like, for the fact that they were there for 48 hours with a group of guys, they stayed and talked to us. I thought, I thought they played it well, like a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. But also it's like, if you go out, if you go out with a group of girls or guys in the place where you live and you go out often, like... Go. Yeah, go, go for it. Go do your thing. Like, you go to the bar, you separate away. Um, but on a trip, I thought they were cool. Like, they talked to us a good amount, but then they went back to the guys, and they would come back and talk, and they'd mm -hmm. go back to the guys. And I was like, that's a hard balance to strike. And they brought other guys into the conversation. It wasn't just, like, <laughs> one or two. They brought another one. Like, we met a lot of their friends. They were, And they would bring them over and be like, what sporting event would you go to? Yeah. <laughs> you could have dinner with anybody dead or alive. Which, because of those questions, involves the whole group it's not an excluding question it's an inclusive question yes single any single taken girlfriend anybody can answer these questions and mm -hmm. then you get to know people at the bar yeah like if anything i'm like graham you could have made a friend out of that yeah 
No, um, I, I agree. Completely agree. So let, let's quick just list off the three, just in case people are taking notes. Eye contact. Okay. Hold it really long. Posture. Like put your shoulders up, back and down, stand up straight and go approach with that confidence. Yep. We'll call that the six inch energy confidence. Yes. And then have good questions out of the box. Yes. Like just keep one in your back pocket. I ask everybody if you could have dinner with somebody dead or alive, who would it be and why? And don't say your grandma. Say somebody we all know. Mm-hmm. We learn. You learn everything about people. So use that next time because... I saw Alex use it and it it started a great conversation. Yeah, we've used it a couple times. Yeah. It's fun. You can use it with in, in any scenario. Okay. You're going to date. Yes. You guys. Something happened to me in Aspen. <laughs> what was that? Tell us about it. <laughs> We're crying. <laughs> <laughs> I realized, and I don't know if it's because I spent time with Alex and Graham who are the most amazing couple ever or if it's because I was just saw love in the air or something but I realized that I think I'm ready to look for a companion not a relationship not a boyfriend a companionship so we're back on hinge yeah we are but in a way of like you'll go you'll still be single Mm mm-hmm you're you're like correct me if I'm wrong I don't want to speak for you but like you don't want a boyfriend but you'd like to find a guy that you're like I want to go on a second date yeah I realize I just want to start experiencing more in New York City don't get me wrong I love experiencing things with my girlfriends but there might be like situations where Alex is out of town with Graham or my other friend is going on a date with this guy or she's out of town and it's like you know what I really want to try this restaurant with this really good wine It'd be kind of fun to try with a guy. It'd be totally fun to try it with a guy. And there's so many guys here. Yeah. And I, that just goes back to like, I want a rich man because I like to spend my money on experiences. I don't want his money for me. I want his money for him so he can keep up with me. So this, okay. So what I've learned about you, you said this on the trip. You're like, I'm not going to buy a hundred dollars shirt, but I will spend a hundred dollars on dinner. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. I will never be mad if I'm out in like out in New York or anywhere and having a great dinner, great wine, great company, great conversations. And the bill comes and it's like 150 a person. I'm like, you know, it was worth it. Cause I'll remember that forever. But if I'm at a store and anything is above $50, I'm like, no, I'm just going to head over to Target or H&M. We're going to shop over there. So you're, you're an experience driven gal. Yes. I love experiences, memories much more than um, like clothes and things. And you want an experience driven guy. Yes. Yeah. I don't want a guy who's going to like buy me a new purse. I want a guy who's like, I'll buy a plane ticket to Napa so we can both go to Napa together. Okay. So we're back on hinge. You're going to go on a date on Friday. Oh, is it really Friday? Yeah, it's Friday. Yeah. Yeah. He said yes. Um, No, but it's like, okay, I have to ask you this though. Why are you mad? Like, how else are you going to? I'm not mad. (laughs) This guy just seems like trouble. Okay. If it's the guy I'm thinking of. Is it the second guy or the first guy? It's the second guy who seems less like trouble. Oh, so yeah. Okay. You know what? And you know what? I'm happy I'm meeting him because he's been on my hinge since the day I downloaded it. So full circle. This is good for us. Totally. Okay. If you're a guy going on a hinge date, what would you do? Like, what would make you happy? Me? Yeah. Oh, what can the guy, what's the guy doing that is like, what's an ideal best first date for you? Okay. So I think there's two. You either can do the eight o'clock meetup after work for drinks where you go to a nice bar, you have some great drinks, no dinner, because remember, we don't eat on the first date. Okay. Or ideally on a Thursday night or Wednesday. Um, or the second option could be happy hour drinks on a Friday before you meet your girlfriends for dinner, because then it's you have an easy out. Um, so like, let's say you have drinks at six, you meet your girlfriends at 7.30 or eight. That's an hour and a half, two hour long date. And then you have an easy out where you're not being rude. And also there's no pressure because no one should go on a first date on a weekend. But Friday, happy hour, that's an exception. So have an out. Having an out. Because it's a little hard sometimes to have an out on like a Thursday night or Wednesday night. Even like I've gone on first dates where the date has gone till 3 a.m. And it's not because we go back to their apartment. It's like we just continue drinking all night. And next thing you know, we're like going out together. And I'm like, this isn't fun. So conversationally, what can the guy do that, that you love? Ask me the exciting questions, like the like the intriguing questions. Like, don't get me wrong. I think it's good to know where someone works, where they're from, blah, blah, blah. But I think the question of how like to tell if someone's a fun person is who would you, if you could have dinner with someone dead or alive, who would you eat dinner with? If you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? What's your favorite restaurant? Like, just like questions that get the mind going. And then when they answer those questions, those grow legs. Like wherever, yes. like whoever they want to have dinner with dead or alive, if it's an entrepreneur, you're like, oh, you're interested in business? And like, oh my God, I love startup coffee shops. And mm-hmm. you're like, whoa. 
So yeah. there's like so many places that can go. Yes. Um, Gotta dig a little deeper on the combos. And Alex, are you gonna be attending this date with me? I am. I'm going to be attending the date. I'll be there. Yay. Somewhere. Do we know where we're going yet? No. Okay. Do we know the time? No. This I'm um, okay, one thing I'm I'm we got like travel delayed yesterday and like very delayed and yeah, Jordan and I, it's really funny because she's so type A of, to the extent of like, where am I going on this dinner date and what time? And I'm like, what am I doing tomorrow? Yeah, we were talking about that. How I'm like, Alex, do you go into Monday knowing exactly we're going to be doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or do you go into the week knowing exactly we're going to be doing on Friday on Thursday night? Yeah, I'm a day. I'm a day ahead. Of t- so I don't know where you're going or when you're going, but just make sure I have my Friday after work cleared out. That's right for this date. Correct. Okay, I can do that, and this is exciting. We're going. We're going to try getting back into the one date a week thing, so it'll be golden. And you might have a second date. We'll see. Yes, because. We're open to that now. Yes, we are. We're I mean, open I, to anything. I was before, but like now I'm actually thinking it would be fun to have somebody to like experience New York City with. Totally. Or travel with even. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I want to ask how you're doing with everything that's going on in life. Last oh, week was a big week for you. It was. Last week was an eye opener for me. I, so the, like an Aspen, I didn't drink and I had so much fun with you. Like right now, that's just like what's best for me. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm grabbing control. And like even going out that night and like you talking to people and stuff and like you drinking, I had a blast. Yes. Like I think the beauty, when you can find a relationship, romantic or just friend where you can have sober fun, that is so important. And I can have so much fun with you sober. I feel like I was the same, like, yeah, <laughs> or actually better. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you, you carried the, you helped me carry the conversations better. And it was fun to see too, like people taking the shots and stuff. And I was like, this is a blast to be in this atmosphere, but I was just like chilling. Yeah. I mean, something we're going to try to work on going forward is have more fun sober. We're going to maybe try like sober Sundays where we come up with an activity that we can share with you guys on how to have fun without drinking because I think a lot of people in their 20s struggle with that where they're like all right well I'm not in high school anymore so I don't really know if I want to like have a movie night with all my friends but I'm not in a relationship where I can just like hang out with my significant other so like what do I do other than drinking well I think you get in a rut like I think it's real it was really easy for us to be like we're gonna go to work and then we're gonna go out Mm -hmm. and that was all we did yeah and it's like We live in the mecca of things to do. There's museums. There's places to see. There's restaurants to try. There's pottery classes. I mean, you name it, you can do it here in the city. Yes. And you and I were like, work, bar, work, bar. And it's like, mix it up a little. And so we're going to do that. Yes. I'm excited. Okay, so what's one thing that you like to do sober? Like, that's a fun activity. Oh, I mean, I love walking. I, I love reading. With friends. Oh, with friends? Or like you can bring someone along with. Um... Probably just like walk. I like, uh, I don't like, I love being alone. So that's a really hard (laughs) question for me. Like, so I didn't, so when Graham stopped drinking, I didn't drink for a year and a half Mm -hmm. with him. Like I was like, I'll just, let me do this in solidarity with you. And I, I spend a lot of that time alone. Um, so I don't know, like, I don't have like a ton of hobbies. Like I, well, I like to wander, like I'll go eat by myself. I'll go to movies by myself. So I'm gonna have to figure that out how to do it with a friend. Oh, that's good. Okay. So we can do that together. Yeah. Um, mine would be, there's nothing I love more than walking. And I mean, obviously I live in New York city, so it's fun, but I would do this in Minnesota too. So you plan a place you're going to have a meal at try to make it like at least a mile or two miles away. And then you get your friends together and you have to walk to it. But see, I got, th- then it's like, do when do we cross the crosswalk? Like, are you, you know, are you going to walk when the hand's flashing or am I just going to walk? <laughs> and then, you know, what are we talking about on that walk? Like I start, you'll be oh. good for me because I, I think compatibility is the ability to sit in silence with somebody. Yes. And I feel totally fine sitting in silence with you or walking with you in silence. But I used to think about doing that with a friend. I'm like, what are we talking about? Is it awkward? Do I hold the door for her? Okay. Like, I, I just go to that place. So you'll be good for me. I yes. can do all these things with you. But like, also, I think that shows that those people you thought that with weren't your like very, very close friends. Because you know, like, once you get really close to them, you're like, I don't need to talk to you. But like the people you're just meeting, you're like, all right, I don't want to have like nothing to talk about. What yeah. am I going to do? <laughs> like a friend date? I leave those things exhausted. Okay. Yeah. So I think that just comes with time. Yes. Yes. We'll work on that. You, we, I, there's one of my friends here. We've walked very far throughout Manhattan and there's long periods of time where we say nothing to each other. We just literally take everything in. Yeah, I like that. So we can do that or find a friend who just doesn't shut up. Yeah. 
Yeah, all of those things. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Sober Sunday, sober fun coming your guys' way. I don't want, I have to say this too. I, the sober Sunday sounds so daunting. Like, I'm I feel like it's like it Sunday. It just rhymes, Alex. Yeah, no, no, no. I know. It's just like sober Sunday to me is like. Fine. Sober activities coming your way. <laughs> does, that, does that make you happy? No, I don't like the word sober. It's like so like. Activities like you're not drinking. Yeah. coming your way. I think it's more so like not at a bar. <laughs> Non-bar activities. <laughs> yes. Coming your way, okay? That's what I like. <laughs> Anyways, can we get into the questions now? Yes. Okay. Okay, so something that we're going to try to do is on Sunday nights, post on the Instagram story, ask the Mean Girls Anything. What's that acronym? A-M-G-A? A-M-A-G? M-A-M? Ask M-A-A. Mean Girls Anything. A-M, ask me, A-M-G-A. A-M-G-A? Ask Mean Girls Anything. Um, <laughs> But I forgot to post it last night, so I posted it at 7.30 this morning. I think it's better. Yeah, so um, the first question, while I'm looking at these, I just know off the top of my head, is the tattoo. When are we going to get the tattoo? If Jordan and I aren't, aren't asleep this afternoon, we'll go this afternoon. Yes. We, Sometime this week. Yeah, yeah. hopefully this afternoon, though, because I think it'd be just fun. Yeah, we'll see. Check the, check the Instagram. We either got it or we didn't. Yeah, so feel free to DM us some uh, ideas you have. We were thinking this. Well, it'll be out after. Oh, yeah, you can't <laughs> do that. Sorry, guys. Um, I mean, you still can if you want. I, I'll get more tattoos. I might. I but know. also, thank you for a thousand reviews. That was awesome. That was incredible. We yeah. were like, we're not gonna get it, and then we're like, oh, we got it. We and we jumped. All of a sudden, I woke up and I was like, oh, I was like, Alex, we hit it. Tattoo time. I already know what tattoo I'm gonna get. Um, yeah, your tattoo is freaking incredible. Oh, it's not the smiley. No, we were just we were gonna. <laughs> I was gonna say that. That would be crazy. That would be like crazy. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. It would be insane. I was like, sh- I was actually kind of shocked that you were doing that. Just now I understand. This a tattoo more in sense. general. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sometimes <laughs> Alex and I are a little um, impulsive, impulsive, jump the gunny. And in my head last week, I was like, yeah, I'll get that. And then this literally last night on the plane, I kept looking at my wrist like, no, do I want <laughs> that on my wrist? That's what I was doing on the plane. I was like, huh, uh, I'm not. And I was like, I'm not getting it. <laughs> Literally, so, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> it will be a tattoo of some sorts, but it will not be this tongue situation smiley face that we got off Google yeah. in an hour yeah. that no one even drew. Yeah. We Googled smiley face with tongue out, drag and dropped it on our logo, and we're not tattooing it on our bodies. Yeah, no. I know. I almost want to get, like, repeats of my current tattoos because I like them so much, but we'll see. Um, okay, and then the other question is... So this is for you, Alex, because I don't have a significant other. But how do you balance hanging out with your significant other and your friends? Oh, I think the biggest thing you can do is, okay, if your significant other is somebody that's going to be your significant other forever, uh, in my in my case, he's my husband, so he is mine forever. But if you were dating them as well and you're like, this, like I want to marry this guy or I want to marry this girl, it's very important that A, your friends like them and they like your friends. Mm-hmm. And I think from there, the balance comes easy. Like if I, there's a hierarchy, right? So when you get married, husband trumps all kind of thing. And so if he has a problem with some of your friends, like address that early on. And if your friends have a problem with him, also address that early on. Like there's nothing worse than having that like awkward energy that you don't need between like your significant other and your friends. If they like each other, it's beautiful because they don't like, if you came over for dinner every night, Graham's gonna love that, Mm -hmm. right? Like I get so much time with him that welcoming welcoming in like a friend comes easy and naturally and fun. Also, maybe I'm lucky, but like he likes to go out with us and he likes to do things with us and we like to do things with him. Um, so I think the balance comes naturally if everyone gets along. Yeah, uh, two things. One, I think you said it perfectly, but if your friends and your significant other like each other, everything is amazing. Like mm-hmm. I love hanging out with you alone. I love hanging out with you and Graham. Like. I love Graham so much that it doesn't bother me if he's with us. It's not like in the back of my head, I'm like, I would really just like to have some A-B time. Right. I also, th- I think it's very important that the person doesn't change. So if I was different in front of Graham than I was on myself, I think that would be a really big problem. Yes. And it would, that would create an awkward scenario. So if you, if you feel that you change when you're like with your boyfriend versus like with your friends, maybe think about that. Yeah. And also like, if you feel like you need to change too, like if I felt like I had to be a different person around you and Graham versus just you then I should probably reevaluate that. Totally. But what I say in front of you, I can say in front of him. Um, uh, one more thing. Oh, of course. I feel, okay, so we're two girls, Graham's the guy. Um, in another scenario, it could be two guys with the girl. The 
or or it could be three girls. Like whoever is the non friend version. So in this scenario, it's Graham. I think they have a little bit extra duty to make the friend feel welcome. That's ex- that's extreme, but like wait, I'm confused. Okay, so you and I are already friends. Yes. And Graham is my significant other. Yes. I think the significant other in this scenario, no matter what gender, have a little work to do to make the friend feel welcome oh yeah yeah that's a really actually that's a really great point you know like don't be like oh i'm just here with like my wife and her friend yeah. it's like no make the friend like step up to the plate and make the friend feel welcome because you're already bonded to one person in the triangle yes and three is a hard number yes so make it easier also just coming from like a single person standpoint um if i could go back and change anything in my past relationships it would have been to have more balance with my friendships and my boyfriend because when you're in a relationship like, you don't know if it's going to be permanent. So you don't want to break up with that significant other and be like, crap, I don't have any friends. Or vice versa, can, like, give your friends too much and then have your significant other be like, well, you know what? You literally hang out with your friends six days a week and you hang out with me one day a week. Like, this isn't just going to work. So balance is everything. It's hard, but it's everything. All, all eggs in one basket is bad until there's a ring. Oh, I love that. You know what yes. I mean? It's balance, balance, balance. And sometimes you think, no, he's going to be, I am going to marry him. And no, my friends are all idiots. And it's like, sweetheart, hold on. Yes. Because you never know what life will throw at you. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, I feel like with that, that's a good place to wrap up unless you have anything to add. No, just like, comment, subscribe. Send it to a friend. Yes. Make sure you're following Mean Girl Pod on Instagram, TikTok. Um, subscribe to our new YouTube channel. You guys, we have a new YouTube channel. You were begging. You were like, I don't want to see Jordan's other stuff anymore. I want to see MGP only. So we made a new YouTube channel. It's going to be all MGP exclusive vlogs, videos, clips from our podcast, our actual podcast, because we like when you guys watch us first listen. But feel free to listen to That's fine, too. Um, and then also make sure to keep rating us on Apple and Spotify, leaving reviews, five stars. Maybe if we get to 10,000 reviews, we'll get another tattoo. I don't know. But we could shave our heads at 10,000. No. Okay. (laughs) We would never do that. But anyways, uh, that's episode seven. Have a great week. Yes. And we will see you guys next Monday. Goodbye. 